Hello everyone, this is Warpster77 tuning into another video. And today for Christmas, well, not quite Christmas yet, but um, anyways, we're going to be talking about, uh, suggested by Max Volume, thank you Max by the way, um, I've been bitching about this game and why it's so bad, and now I'm going to justify the main reasons. I've probably said the main reasons, but I'll go into more detail. Now, I made a list here, quite length, a oh, quite lengthy list. So, sit back and enjoy, and I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. But as of right now, it's time for you guys to think a little bit more about how screwed over this game is and why it's poorly developed. Anyways, let's get started at the top. Okay, guns that lack diversity. Now, in Halo, for example, all the guns are different. True, there's no customization of them, which is what needs to be fixed in that game. So, for example, Springfield, damage, all the snipers except the Lee, I mean the PTRS, do the same damage. That's easily said, and can be justified. I get it. It's supposed to be a one-shot kill, supposed to do a lot of damage. Makes sense. So, the fire rate, it is pretty quick. Now, the thing is, its iron sights are impressively accurate, which is good. Now, the scope itself is a bit inaccurate, which is totally fine. That's that's what so it's supposed to be. Their scopes are different. They themselves, though, are not. For example, the Mosin Nagant, it's supposed to fire really quick. For example, not, not its actual fire rate, its uh, projectile velocity. Now, it does, but Arasaki just beats it, and its accuracy is not lower. Its, its scope accuracy is probably the most accurate thing there is. And the Mosin Nagant is not as accurate. Now, when I say it's lacking diversity, they all do the same damage. They all have the same amount of bullets, except for the Lee, which needs to be toned down. This gun needs to be toned down a thing or two. And anyway, they lack diversity. How to improve that? For example, with Springfield, that should be when it's iron sights. It should be... Oh yeah, that's another thing I'll get to in a minute. So, when it's in iron sights mode, where you don't have the scope on, it should be a lot more accurate. Um, the car, give it more power, because it's a higher cartridge. Mosin Nagant, make it faster. And this thing needs to be toned down. Anyway, PTRS. Everyone knows I hate this gun. I'm biased towards it, so I'm going to leave it alone. Because I could just rip into that days on and days on. But I won't, because I'm a professional. Anyways, so another thing is... These rifles do lower damage when you don't have a scope on. What's the point of not having... It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Why would you have no scope on it if you can't instantly kill someone with it? I don't see the point in having it. It's um, not, not worth it if you're just not even going to use the darn thing. Unless you're putting a scope on it. It's not even bolt-action rifles, it's just snipers. I don't know why he called it that. Just ridiculous. Needless to say, on to the next thing. Um, I will compliment on this though. The pistols are very diverse. The SMGs are very diverse. The rifles are very diverse. Those are all very diverse weapons because they all have their own sort of features to them. Some need to be improved. Some need to be lowered. But uh, we'll get to that in due time. We're on the list where it says lacking diversity. Grenades. Hold them for as long as you like. They cook, they explode. Don't really have much difference except for the Molotov, which is pretty obvious. You throw it, it blows up instantly and spreads fire. Okay. These need to be fixed because they all have a 6 second fuse. 5 second fuse. I doubt it's, it's 5 seconds. It's 6 seconds all around. And they need to be fixed. Their blast radiuses are incredibly high. Their distance is remarkable. 
it shouldn't even be a thing, they can explode through walls, regardless of fireworks or not. And you get three of them. Five if you get the perk. Moving on, my case rests there. The MGs. I will admit, MG42, pretty badass. Browning, pretty badass. But what about these other ones that you rarely see? Less ammo, lower rate of fire, its accuracy is questionable, its recoil is high, weighs a ton. Why use this piece of shit? Low ammo, low power, it takes four or five bullets, might as well use an SMG. Its fire rate isn't even that impressive, and its reload speed takes forever. Why use it? Type 99, light, reloads fast, shoots a lot, has 30 bullets. Why not use it? <sighs> is there a difference? Except this Bren fires slower, damage isn't as high, and it reloads super fucking slow. I don't understand. These need to be fixed. I like the Browning, I like the MG42. The, could you, the attachments I am not really a fond of, so I don't mind them. Um, let's see. Now, onto the perks. These perks aren't exactly, like, out of place. There's a couple that are out of place, and I'll show them right now. Bomb Squad. This isn't an equipment. Because the, the tiers go like this. Equipment, weapon increase, like a weapons perk, specifically, and then a player perk. Equipment, increase weapon, player perk. Okay. Bomb Squad would fall under tier 3. This one has a lot. You'll see this list is huge. Stopping power, it belongs here, okay? This is a direct <laughs> weapon increase. But this is what doesn't. Uh, it's flak jacket. This is a player perk because it's not affecting any weapon, it's affecting you. Now, you would argue Juggernaut's the same way, but here's the thing. If you had Juggernaut and stopping power available, or Juggernaut and some some of these perks with Juggernaut, it's too much to handle. So it, it's a good call on Leto to put Juggernaut in the second tier. Shades. This would go in player uh, tier three. Now you might also question camouflage. Why does that? This is directed to weapons because it's a weapon that sets you onto the minimap anyways. So it would fall into tier two. Deep impact. I have yet to see anyone use this. Except for Rune, actually. I give Rune Knight props. He used Deep Impact with a pumper shot. Now, this would go under Tier 2. Because it's affecting a weapon's penetration factor. And then... Uh, oh yeah, that's pretty much it. This just belongs in there. Now, there's also useless perks, I will say. Um, these need to be increased. The Bouncing Beddies and the Satchel Charges. Here's why. Satchel Charges, super heavy, which is good. They shouldn't be like a grenade where you can lob them forever and ever and ever. But, their blast radiuses and power are really pathetic. What you should use them for is for safeguarding flags or command posts. That's what I'd use them. But here's the thing, they don't despawn like Beddies do when you die. So you can detonate them after, um, when you come back in. But what should be fixed is when their blast radiuses themselves. What you should do is instead of because it takes two to kill someone, make it that, but make it possible to like shoot them or defuse them like a Betty. But also have it so that you uh, say place it instead of throw it if you're gonna make it a big kaboom. And the Bouncing Bettys. I ran over these things and still lived. Before, if you touched them, you were dead. We need uh, more powerful Bettys because if there's Bomb Squad, phew, there's no need. Oh yeah, whoops. Uh, other, other than that, they're pretty good. Stopping power. This thing is practically useless. 
it used to be really effective in the old one because you actually saw how much damage it did. Stopping power I recommend for people who use rifles, but it's pretty much useless, so using sleight of hand would what I would prefer. Stopping power does not increase maximum bullet damage. It does not cancel. Well, it might cancel out Juggernaut, but it does not increase maximum bullet damage. It does none of that. And that's what needs to be fixed. If you're going to use stopping power, it should drop you instantly. Just, just destroy you. No questions asked. Um, fireworks. It's useless because the grenades are already massively explosive, and if you just want to add more onto that, Jesus, fireworks, it's not necessary, but people who do use it, <clears throat> pros, god damn, that thing will blow you a million miles away. There's no avoiding it, and it's ridiculous. It destroys flak jacket, which is what it's supposed to do. It makes sense, but that's not right. Fireworks needs to be used. It should be used to do what normal grenades should do. Grenades need to be toned down, period. I, I honestly like camouflage. Oh yeah, shades, I forgot about you. You, deserve, you belong in tier 3. Because, why would you put shades in tier 2? It's sacrificing so much important things. It, I, it just doesn't make sense. Oh yeah. And... Steady aim. Does not increase hit fire ability. Uh, you have the same amount of luck as doing it before. If you actually saw the crosshair shrink, which it should be doing, because it's all statistics, and Lido statistics are fails, because it's kind of just... it just goes. The game doesn't have a set strict pattern or rule, because um, when it comes to like SMGs and things like that. That's why people use quote-unquote snipers, and uh, grenades. Uh, moving on, we need to talk about radar and its distance fixing. Now, it makes sense to have different levels of radar because some maps are really big, some maps are really small. So if you had a, a radar that was gauged for like long distance and you were on a close quarters map, it would show people on top of you all the time. Now, that sounds really genius, and it does work sometimes, but on certain maps it doesn't. And it doesn't tell you what it's gauged to. My best example would be, uh, what is it? Vendetta. Vendetta and... Uh, what is it? Asylum. Those two, I can't tell if you're on top of me, or if you're 30 feet away. Turns out, either works, because, heaven forbid, they get the distance right. It should just be leveled right above, I can't scroll out to show you, it should be like right above the radar to tell you what it's gauged to, like in Halo or, or in everything else. Uh, moving on. Let's see. Oh yes, the sights on guns. And while I'm doing sights, I might as well just go into the attachments. Why would you even use this? Oh, oh yeah, that's the only one you can get. Why would you even use this? It doesn't increase your accuracy. It decreases your accuracy nonetheless. Because when you move with it, it moves side to side. It's easier to just hip fire the damn thing. Or aim down sights with iron sights. That, that's more accurate. It adds recoil. It actually slows you down. I guess scopes and sights slow you down a little bit. Not as much as a sniper scope, heaven forbid. That's what also needs to be fixed, is sniper scopes don't weigh a whole lot. <laughs> uh, hold on. Sniper, so sniper scopes don't weigh a whole lot. <laughs> that is the biggest scope I've ever seen in my whole life. Anyways. Sights on things such as SMGs, they're useless. They decrease your accuracy. Where's the sight? They don't give you any extra range. They don't zoom in. Makes sense for an aperture sight, but like if the telescopic sights and stuff, they should be having a zoom function like the scope. But no, they don't. Another thing that can be improved. Flash hiders. A flash hider, what it should do is, 
instead of taking you off the radar, because that's basically a suppressor, is it should not show you where the bullets are coming from. That's You know whenever you get shot, you get that little arrow thing? That's what you should have. It shouldn't have that. It should just show your screen getting really red. I think that'd just be brilliant. Another useless thing? Flashlight. They don't blind you anymore. They don't do any of that. It's not like a flare. Again, uh, faulty use of materials and stuff. He doesn't take into account of these things. Drum mags, slow you down, makes sense. More ammo you're carrying, slows you down. Now, what is a really important attachment is a stock. That, I actually do believe, increases your hip fire because I've used it with and without the stock. You need the stock. But why on earth would you put a telescopic sight on an SMG? Unless it was going to actually give you distance and increase your accuracy and lower the recoil. But it does none of that. Okay, moving on. Now, how to fix the grenades. These grenades are all the same, like I was saying. Whoops. Well, give them a different purpose. I believe the cooking of grenades should be taken out of the game. In exchange, instead of having to wait forever, make a grenade take only like three seconds to blow up. AKA the frag. Instead of being able to log the fucker forever and ever, make a grenade that's really light. Stetlingrad. If you need grenades to stick to walls, or be sticky about it, or need to blow up through a wall, sticky grenade. Molotovs don't need to blow up like a like it's filled with Semtex. It should just be an incendiary grenade. Now, in exchange, it shouldn't go out unless you stop, drop, and roll. All I'm saying, or go out in water, whichever. And he's capable of doing that. It's been used in Roblox before, so I don't know why he's uh, lazy, lazy scripting. Yeah, that's what he is, a lazy game designer. Moving on. Shotgun diversity. There's two shotguns. One that does take a bit of skill, one that just takes a lot of luck, accuracy, and patience. Now, what you can do is you can have a long range shotgun, which I can actually give you the model for the gun. I looked it up, it's a real gun. The Remington 77. The Rem <laughs> Remington 780. It was, it was designed back then. Basically, use that for a large spread shotgun. And come on, the trench gun does not have any range whatsoever. This has too much range. <laughs> but make the Remington. Because we all know the trench gun's a rapid fire shotgun. Make the make the <clears throat> Remington need like double tap or something to get rapid succession of fire. And then there was a German rail shotgun, which was used for long distance things. Put that on there. Make it look heavy like an MG, but it's used for long distance things. So it'd have lower damage, but it's still a shotgun. And it held like 10 bullets. Okay. Now, I rarely see people use rifles, and when they do, they have trouble with it. What needs to be said is, these rifles need to be more hip fire accurate, they need to be, uh, they need to have, for example, the Gewer or the SVT, need at least two more bullets if you're going to have the damage that it's doing, or increase the damage or make stopping power useful so that you would actually use it for a rifle. As well. Except for, I will say, the M M1 Garin's power for close range needs to be a bit more, like 50. And for th further distance, it should be 3, like it is. Gewer. These should take three bullets. If you have stopping power, it should be two bullets. Three to two, like I said. M1 carbine, three to four. Long drag on, two to three. It's just that simple. I don't know why it's so. he makes it so underpowered. He doesn't even focus on these things. He doesn't give everything a purpose. And that's what's the problem with this. 
Now, he needs to tone down the Lee Enfield for sniper mode. There was no Lee Enfield rifle that had 10 bullets with a sniper scope. The model that was actually used for a quote-unquote sniper had 7 bullets, and it was side-loaded, not clip-loaded. Now, what you could do is, with, with Lee, for sniper mode, make it that the clip comes out instead of slow reload, but in exchange, make it only five bullets. Eh? Now, let's see. Ah, yes, Arasaki. Statistical, statistics-wise, that Lido, I don't even trust these. They're all lies. Um. This thing is basically the Mosin Nagant, but a little bit better. How why? Accuracy, more more improved. Velocity speed, it's a bit faster. Don't know why, but it is. Power is the same, so whatever. Primary loadout as a G. Type 100. Heard me bitch about this being an overpowered weapon? Now I'll tell you why. It's damage com rivals with the... Uh, Thompson, it's rate of fire, just a bit slower, like a millisecond slower. But it has to, it has ten more bullets, has more range, and its hip fire accuracy is more than the Thompson's. Ugh. This screams overpowered. Why not use this? Tone it down. Type ninety nine. Basically, it's a Bren with much faster rate of fire. It's a bit more accurate. Its uh, its range is impressive. All all the MGs' range are impressive with the bipod or not. And, and it reloads really quick. Don't need a sleight of hand for it. Why not use this? The only thing that I could see being different wise is the MG42 and Browning, which basically have a ton of bullets, fire fast, it's an MG. But this is like an assault rifle on steroids. Now, for the Bren, what I could say is, keep the damage the same, but give it a bit more hip fire accuracy. Or vice versa, give this a bit more hip fire accuracy, but give this less recoil. You know, I don't see why this, but he makes things so easy to choose between. Like, there's no, it's not a honor system. Um, now, that's all my bitching. Time to give some back, you know. The gameplay, in theory, is very well. That's why I play it. <laughs> if I was just bitching about this game all day, why do I play it? Because the gameplay is good. Well, in theory. It can be better by these improvements. And then you'll have a perfect game, in my opinion. Of course, that's what it is. It's my opinion, so of course it would be a good game. But that's why we're here, is to see how many other people like this idea and how many people hate these currents. Um, wow, I have not used that at all and hate these uh, current fixtures that I'm complaining about as well. How many other people don't like this? Now, the idea of the map layout, brilliant. I love the maps. I can memorize every one. But, do you guys remember Downfall? Ah, do you remember Train Yard? That might bring some nostalgic memories back for all the snipers. Do you remember the large uh, construction map with the green buildings and the gray buildings? Cargo map, I believe it was. And what was it? Give me a second. I'll think of it later. Um, all all really good maps. I really enjoyed those. Bring those back, and that'd be even better. Now I do like the newer maps too. I love espionage. Estate's a little iffy, but it pulled off well for snipers. It's really fun. Um, the game modes. Most people didn't like the old one because it was just a deathmatch. Now, 
It's a deathmatch with objectives. Pretty cool. Now, the diversity in rifles and pistols. Phenomenal. Like, I can list out everyone's power. Rate of fire. Accuracy. Hip fire accuracy, this thing? Really impressive. Ammo. Um. I forget what you are. You are just an automatic, I think. <laughs> the odd one out. See, an odd one out is okay. But. Odd one out for the bad? Give this thing more power. Or give it more ammo. Get it. It's rate of fire. Like, I don't know why. See, these are lies. It's rate of fire needs to be more. Um, pistols. Power. Average. Close up. Now, I forgot about this. This is basically a P38 with a bit more damage and a bit more range. Extreme power. <laughs> but note, this is accurate. This has range. This does not. Or well, it has range. It's just its hip. Its hip fire accuracy is questionable. Luger, this thing has impressive hip fire. Not so much damage though. Just ammo. See, they have good things to them. It's just there's certain things that need to be fixed. And cool things that would be nice to add would be, oh, I forgot about this, the objective things. I hate that the flag can take bullets, but it's also kind of handy because when you're running away, it kind of gives you that second to react faster, so I guess it has a purpose. But um, I hate when the flag word itself gets in your way, or when it says A, C, and B for the bars to, that you see them. That just gets aggravating for me. Because then I can't shoot, and the flag is actually and the flag poles actually have caught grenades from me lobbing them at them, and it's really just bothered me. It's ridiculous. But needless to say, which what's really nice is, well, what would be nice to add to it is interactive environments, explosion barrels, uh, the cars blow up, <clears throat> getting a tent, uh, a turret, like a mounted turret on the sniper towers that you get in that you see around have a turret on there or a turret on the on the some of the buildings I thought that would be really cool another thing is kill streaks so what you get a couple player points and a lot of XP whoop de doo there's no real reward to help you keep going have like uh, I don't know give them an equipment special grenade free fill uh, bouncing Betty's Give, give you more ammo, because you're going to run out of ammo. More nades. Give them a bazooka, for God's sakes. Or chat, or satchel charges. Give them something to keep going. Second would be uh, different melee weapons, because you have the knife, and we all know the knife thing's busted to shit. So uh, give them, like, I don't know, a customizable knife here on the side. You know? Mad Murderer's got that down, but who cares? And finally, ammo crates. Just put a couple scattered around the map. He said that there was like, uh, this, like crates that randomly appear where you can purchase the key to unlock a random gun, camo skin, or something else. This game's been out long enough, the guns are already purchasable doesn't really matter rare camo skins maybe for some people but the camo doesn't really do anything make it ammo crates we're running out of ammo here anyways guys this has been warpster 77 on christmas eve well christmas eve morning day dawn dusk time tuning out and i hope you all enjoy me bitching about this and hopefully it brings you all to the attention of why I just despise Leto. Because for someone who has made his own game, true it's not as popular as this, but I hope you all enjoy. I will see you all in the next video. Angry Man, signing out. Asta.